Okay. In the previous video then, we looked at a situation where we had a continuous beam, but we split it into three components. We said that these we would initially regard as fixed ends. Uh, and these outer ends we would idealize as a pinned um, end. And that could be either fixed or rollered. Um, so we worked out our distribution factors um, and we found with the stiffnesses of a fixed pin being 3EI over L. So E's were constant, I's were constant, L's were constant. Um, if we look at the problem that I'm going to solve, I'm going to take these lengths all as five meters. Uh, you will have your own value to work with uh, in your assignment. Um, so these five meter spans, equal spans, with the same Young's modulus, so they're made out of concrete and they have the same section um, size, so the same second moment of area. Uh, so the ratios um, for the distribution factors are the stiffness of the beam divided by the stiffness of the joint, so 3 over 7 here, 4 over 7 here, because we've got 4 EI over L, the main span, which has two fixed ends, 4 over 7 and 3 over 7. Okay, another way, once you have done a few of these, you just know that um, the, the stiffness of a fixed pin compared to a fixed fixed is 3 quarters. So you can get to the same, with, with e, I and B, e and I and L being constant, you can get to the same value just by knowing that these uh, these types of spans have three quarters of the stiffness of this double fixed end. So you can work these out by saying three quarters divided by the sum of three quarters plus one, which is one and three quarters, which gets you to the same value of this three sevenths. Or in decimal, that's not point four two nine. And um, similarly, this one if we take this as having a stiffness of one, this has three quarters. So that's one divided by one and three quarters, uh, which is equal to um, four sevenths, which is in decimal point, not point five, seven, one. Okay. Um, so those are our distribution factors, not point four two nine, not point five seven one. Label those up as our distribution distribution factors for when we come to distribute our moment. Okay. So uh, the next thing we need to do is work out our W and the values that of W that I will work with. We we've got a concrete uh, slab. And I'm going to say, just for the sake of argument, that my permanent actions work into the Eurocode's terminology. Uh, so my first permanent action is my self-weight of the slab. And I'm just going to say for argument's sake that that is equal to one kilonewton per meter run. If you remember, we're working on a line beam. Um, so that would be one kilonewton per meter squared with, for my slab, which whatever the thickness of the slab is. So that is worked out from the density of concrete, say 25 kilonewtons per meter cubed, multiplied by uh, one meter run by one meter depth uh, by the um, thickness of my slab, which uh, gives me um, 25 kilonewtons, okay, let's do this by steps. So 25 kilonewtons per meter cubed is our density of concrete. Uh, and then I will multiply by, by 
the depth of the slab, which will give me kilonewtons per meter squared. Um, and then because we're looking at a meter strip, I'll multiply that by one meter uh, into the into the uh, depth axis, the z axis, the third axis that we're going to ignore because we're do, doing this as a plane. We're idealizing this as a plane um, beam, a, a single line, in fact. Uh, so that comes out as this value will have units of kilonewtons per meter run okay so i'll take that as one kilonewton per meter similarly my permanent finishes action pfa not to be confused with cement replacement if those of you know about cement replacement this is just my terminology for the permanent finishes actions which is the self-weight of all the other stuff that's not structural. So I've got the self-weight of the concrete slab, which is structural, and the self-weight of things like floor screeds on the top of the slab, ceiling tiles on the bottom of the slab, uh, lighting, uh, air conditioning ducts, whatever. And again, for just for, for ease, I'm just going to take that as one kilonewton per meter run again. Again, that's given in your data sheets for your assignment in kilonewtons per meter squared but we are working on a meter strip so we can multiply that by a meter and get kilonewtons per meter um, for our line beam planar structure and then the last one is q1 we've only got one q value q being a uh, variable action and um, that has, we'll, we'll take that as a, a, a value, so that's our live load, if you like. So that's the, the people who will you know, walk around on the slab or what, whatever variable load we're putting onto this slab, which we get from the codes, if we're doing this in, in reality, but from your data sheets in your assignment, and we'll take that as five kilonewtons again per meter it will be given as five kilonewtons per meter squared but because we're doing a meter strip we multiply that by meter which gives us five kilonewtons per meter run on our line beam planar modeled structure so we need a design effect so our w which is in kilonewtons per meter and we need that the uh, the effect at design which if you remember from our design lectures we have a gamma factor uh, gamma g times our g loads and we sum all those up I'm not going to write the formula out in full uh, for our situation we have um, gamma g times g1 plus gamma g times g2 uh, and that's essentially gamma G1 and gamma G2. Technically, they could be different, if you, uh, particularly if you're looking at other structures, say bridges. In, in most buildings, they will always be uh, this value that we're going to use, gamma G of 1.35 at ULS, ultimate limit state. So ulti ultimate limit state, we are considering this uh, structure. Um, so we want to, to verify it at its uh, collapse state, its ultimate limit state, when, when things start uh, causing things to collapse and a threat to life is involved. So we increase the loads, the permanent loads, by 35%. So we multiply everything by 1.35. And then we add to that our gamma Q1 times our value for Q1. We've only got one Q, so we would further add the sum of all the other combination um, live loads or uh, variable actions multiplied by their combination factor psi naught, but because we don't have any, we don't need to worry about that in this situation. Uh, gamma Q or this problem buildings, it's, it's not 
the same for all structures um, and indeed in, 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 in certain situations the, these can change but for our purposes for, for this example uh, gamma Q is 1.5 um, so because our variable actions are less predictable than our permanent actions we increase that load at ultimate limit state so we, we make sure that we've got enough capacity in our structure to take this increased load and we increase that by a full 50% um, again that's because it's it's less predictable so we use a bigger factor to multiply that by so for our example then we are going to use a UDL of W um, at design and that will be uh, 1.35 sorry times 1 plus um, 1.35 again times 1 Oh, sorry, G1 and G2, that is, not G1, uh, times G2, so our permanent finishes action, which again is 1, and then plus our gamma Q, 1.5, multiplied by our live load, a variable action of 5, okay? So that gives us a total of, uh, what's that going to be, 2.7, for these, so we lump these together as 2.7 for our permanent actions plus 1.5 times 5, 7.5 kilonewtons, which gives us a total of 10.2 kilonewtons per meter run. It's kilonewtons per meter squared, but again, because we're doing this on a meter strip, this will be our UDL of 10.2 kilonewtons per meter run. The last thing to do before we start the actual moment distribution is work out what our fixed end moments are uh, for the backspans. We call these the backspans, the um, fixed pinned spans. We have our W, 10.2. So this is our fixed end moment where this is one two that's two as well that's three that's three and that's four so our fixed end moments for span one to two is equal to 10.2 times we said our length is five so our span is five squared uh, divided by 12 for a fixed end moment, uh, sorry, 8 that is, for a um, fixed pin. That just comes from our textbook or our reference book or our notes that we take into the exam. Uh, fixed end moment for a uh, fixed pinned structure, so that's the fixed end moment at this point here, is WL squared over 8 which gives us a value of 31.875 and that's kilonewton meters okay um, we then need to work out our fixed end moment for our next span which is 2 to 3 and that is equal to our UDL W 10 Point two multiplied by 5 squared, the length squared again. This time it's divided by 12. So a fixed, fixed, if you remember from the previous video, uh, M is WL squared divided by 12, which gives us 21.25, again, kilonewton meters. Okay. So we've now got the starting point for our moment distribution. We notice that at three, four, span three, four, that has the same. So this is also the fixed end moment for span three, four. It's fixed uh, pinned. So we will end up with a moment, starting moment of zero here and zero here, because those are pins and they're not capable of 
of carrying moments. The moment, the starting moment at this side of joint three is 31.875. Similarly here, 31.875 kilonewton meters. And then our fixed end moment for these two are 21.25 kilonewton meters and 21.25 this side as well. However, we said that we are going to adopt our sign convention based on clockwise being positive. So we end up here with a, an external fixed end moment. If you imagine this is loaded here, so it's trying to turn this anti-clockwise. So we need a reaction fixed end moment, which is clockwise. So we say this is positive. This side, however, is going to be in the opposite direction. So this UDL on here is going to try and turn this end clockwise. So the reaction will be anti-clockwise. So this is minus 21.25 because we're, we're taking clockwise as positive. This is positive 21.5 again, um, because that's in a clockwise direction. This is anti-clockwise, so that's minus uh, 31.875. So those are our starting um, fixed end moments and our distribution factors, which is what we need to get started on doing our moment distribution exercise. So what that means is that we've got a difference 31 and 21 roughly, so roughly 10 um, kilonewton meters of moment difference between those two. So we need to have a balancing moment and we need to allow that then to distribute into this structure because we cannot have a, a difference of moments that this moment in the clockwise direction internally at two must equal uh, be equal and opposite to the uh, moment as a result of this so that we when we release this these fixed end moments onto the structure they will redistribute according to the stiffnesses of the structure and find an equilibrium state within the structure. And that's what we are going to do by the moment distribution exercise in the next video.